Hello and welcome to this week's video. A big thank you to all our new subscribers. Big thanks for that. There's been quite a few of you. So we're getting the numbers up there slowly. We seem to be getting around about two to five a day. This week we're working on two radios, an STC A5140 from 1954 onwards. I'm not quite sure how long they built them for. It has this, a similar cabinet to the Aristone I did last year. I'm pretty sure that the Aristone is uh, a cast off cabinet from um, STC. The second one is a uh, Mallard. It's similar to the Philips I did last year, the small one, uh, for which I still haven't finished the dial. <laughs> um, been rather busy, to, um, too busy to sit down and muck around with Illustrator. Uh, but now that I have a little bit more time, it'll be coming soon. The, they both have a similar problem. The STC is more terminal than the Moard. The Moard I can probably, actually I can probably take the, um, the part out of the STC and put it in the Moard because it is the same part. Anyway, I'll let you uh, watch the video and um, I don't actually finish the mullard in this video. It's an ongoing uh, project, so enjoy. This was the condition I picked it up in at our bar annual barbecue up at the Dandenongs. Does work to a, a degree. Does work to a degree. I have tested it on the Variac and the isolation transformer, of course. It's missing the tuning knob, which was a bit of a, a pain. And this is one of the earlier versions of this radio. They later put a uh, heat shield across the inside of this because this is actually heat damage, all this cracking and the warping. So it's missing a bit there, a bit there and there, and a piece there. Now it says on it, STC A5140 Bantam, and it has a 64X, a 6CH6, which I've never heard of, a 6AT6, a 6BA6, and a 12AH8, which I've not come across before either. Although Shango 066 um, has mentioned that particular valve in a recent video. It says works, needs to dial lamps, new cabinet, <laughs> uh, screws, etc. needs dial alignment. So it's in, well, pretty poor condition. It's got um, a heat mark there from or a burn mark. And a burn mark there and there. So this looks like it may need, oh, actually some damage there as well. Well, that might be tape or something. So this looks like it might need to be glued up and probably re-sprayed the yellow. That, that is actually coming off the front. So I might actually, is that glued on? Yeah. So I might actually carefully remove that. This one seems loose. 
so that will come off and then I can respray it properly. Hopefully the original colour. Now they're not going to come off easily. Must do something with that fly screen too. come off easily okay disconnect my aerial this looks like it was put on in the early 60s or something like that Coated wire. Ooh, yuck. <laughs> wow. This is definitely going to need to be taken outside and cleaned. This is the most disgusting radio I've seen in a long time. Not sure what that is. It's a piece of felt or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> I think this needs to be taken outside. Just bring you in a bit closer and you can have a look at the disgustingness. <laughs> yeah. It is one grotty radio. Gee, this has been well and truly run into the ground. Sure whether it's supposed to be like that inside. <laughs> I'm going to pause here and see if I can get those knobs off. Well it was quite a struggle but I did manage to get this one off. It has a metal, so it's a D-shaped metal ring, then the shaft goes down the centre of that and it's retained by this metal which is actually sort of dent indented. So it's quite a good design but yeah but that is actually sort of welded itself to the shaft. I'm not sure how I'm going to do the uh, lower one which I think is the on off and tone switch, um, on off switch and tone um, because that's below the chassis so this is going to be quite difficult this has quite an unusual way of attaching the chassis to the cabinet just those two screws down here I haven't removed the lower knob yet And this does have the heat shield in it, so it's just tin foil stuck to the top of it. I'm not sure whether that's original or 
a later edition. It looks original, but it doesn't seem to have done very much good. And this should reveal the original colour under there. Okay, so I've actually forced the knob off. Where is it? Oh well, the actual retaining clip came off and then the knob proper came off. So at the risk of some disease or other, I'm going to lift this out. Uh, this is pretty disgusting. It's not too bad inside. And yeah, I might be able to just put this on something very flat there and apply some heat. I'll remove this heat shield, not that it's doing any good. I wonder if, or maybe that's the aerial or something. Is there a contact? No. Very carefully put that out of the way. And we'll have a bit of an inspection of it. This looks fairly conventional to, you know, with five valves. It's interesting how the tuning works. So that is a great big long shaft along there. The tuning coils are down there, or the capacitors down there, way down there. And there is a wooden so a drum or something, which seems very Not sure whether that's supposed to turn or not. Yuck. <laughs> and actually the dial lamps have been removed. Or with the dial lamp. There's only one in here at the moment. And I can't see any evidence of another one. Okay, let's have a look underneath. Oh, yuck. So that white powder is down here as well inside. It says the caps have been replaced, but I, I can't see any new caps in there. They all look pretty crusty to me, or actually melted. That, that one has actually these three have actually completely melted. Uh, that one's not great either. Those Dukon caps look fairly original. Yeah, this one's going to be a bit of a pain to replace, I think. Oh, maybe not. Uh, it's up there. Interesting arrangement of resistors there, three parallel together. And that looks like a, yes, that's actually Perspex with the printing on the back of it. That's the dial pointer. 
a bit of looks like no <laughs> when say that we'll get banned pubic <laughs> um Speaker looks okay. The third piece of this stuff, maybe that goes across the front or something. Well, I'm going to take this outside and give it a good hose down. Not literally, but metaphorically. And... I'll give the case a bit of a scrub and I'll come back and we'll see where we are. Oh, that pot is completely corroded. That transformer case will need a bit of work done on it. Botany Road, Alexandra, New South Wales, which is in Sydney. Okay, I'll do my stuff and be back. Well, I've left the cabinet soaking overnight and it hasn't come up all that well although some of that this stuff will polish off it was absolutely the worst radio I've come across so far and I've done quite a few radios over the years. I'm a bit worried about the top still though. I might, I don't know, that, that is pretty bad. Oh, that, that is really bad there. That is all distorted there. And as you can see probably on the camera, that is sort of distorted as well but as I said I might be able to fix that up but I'm more worried about these big cracks in here and um, down this corner here but remarkably the dial glass is absolutely perfect there's no scratches on it at all. It's and it's perfectly clear, as you can see. I don't know whether that's been replaced or something. That's really strange. And I've just noticed another big. Oh no, that's not a crack. But that is really, really odd how the. The glass is so clear. I'll put that up there and as you can see there's no scratches or anything in it. That is really really odd and I don't know how that could have been replaced. The back has come up reasonable. There's still a lot of muck in the in the slots. But I should better get those out. That big crack there is probably not easily uh, repair although. Yeah, I could probably repla replace that. But the colour wouldn't be the right thing. So this is also a clock. I don't know whether you can see that on there. It says set time. So there was a clock version of this. And... Um, it was over there and the dial was much smaller. I've just tried a bit of polish on the cabinet and this is what's coming off of it. So it might clean up 
In fact, the, the sides and the bottom will clean up quite well, but I'm pretty sure that the, the top, which I've also had a go at, I think that's too far gone. That is really, yeah. So those parts there, etc. Yeah, which is a real pity. So I haven't seen a yellow one around at all. But as so many of these melted on the top, it's not surprising. Okay, I'll go and get the chassis and we'll, I'll start on that and we'll be back. I had to use some pretty um, harsh abrasive, uh, not abrasives, but chemicals on this to get all of the, well, some of the grease off. It's still not too great over there, but over here it's beginning to clean up. Um, that's actually... This is actually folded up from the base of the chassis. It is, yeah. And... I wonder how they did that. Anyway, um, so it hasn't come up too badly at this stage. So I'm going to yeah. this must have been out in the I don't know oil field or somewhere because <laughs> it's absolutely disgusting. Um, so I'll replace these two caps here to start with, although these don't look very healthy at all, these four, or six I should say. So two there, two, two there, and two there. Um, and there's another one over here which is pretty crusty as well. So I'll replace these two and we'll start from there. Now I've noticed the tuning gang is actually pretty bad. Um, oops, don't want those in there. Um, so there's something in there. So that white stuff, I think which is sort of all over it. I'm just hoping that wasn't anything too poisonous. So I'm going to actually find a toothbrush. In fact, I don't know where the toothbrushes have got to, so I haven't used them yet, but I'll find a little brush and clean that out. Of course, if these are dirty, they were short across and things will happen that you don't want to happen. Now I'll clean that out with the business card as usual, a bit later on, but they were definitely shorter across. Okay, I wish this cord was a little bit longer, but We'll see how we go. All the valves are British on this. So they're all Braemar valves. As I say, all the valves are British, but everything else is Australian. Okay. I was gonna plug it straight into the mains.
we are getting static and everything like that so and we're picking up the lights Hmm. Well, it's doing something at least. Okay, the next step will be to test the valves. And I'm not sure that I have the equivalents in my table. They all seem to be labelled, so that's not a problem. This is the one that I'm worried about. It's pretty black. I think that might be the rectifier or something like that. Or maybe this one's the rectifier. Because those two seem to get very hot very quickly. Well, I was just about to report some success and then the magic smoke started to escape from the transformer so i suspect that the transformer is dead because when i put the dim bulb up uh, when i put the voltage up a bit past about oh, 40 50 volts the dim bulb comes on very brightly so that's the end of this radio until I can find a new transformer. And it's probably, I don't know. If I can find a better chassis, maybe I'll swap the chassis over or something like that. But odds on, I'm not going to find another whole radio. And especially not in yellow. I sus, yeah. And I suspect that if I do find another one and the case is damaged, then maybe, yeah. But I'll have to see in the future. So that's the end of this for now. So I'll start working on um, a client's Philip, uh, Mallard Phillips, similar to the one I did back last year with the upright dial, the small, tiny one. Okay, so, yeah, I'm not sure whether to end this video now or whether to start on the Phillips. So this is the one I restored a few months back. I still haven't got around to finishing off the dial. I'm still thinking on that occasionally. So you can see how close these are. The only real difference is the slats on the front. So they've put a, they put a, yeah, they've omitted the slats and put these end pieces on, because they're actually glued on, because there's a bit of a gap behind them, 
Hmm, didn't know that. So, the different grill cloth, of course. Um, mullard badge there. Phillips badge up there. And, of course, the slats. Inside, they're identical. So this is 61330. And this one has the sticker on it, of course. But inside, they're identical. A larger transformer. Yeah. Interesting. The Philips one has a smaller transformer. Maybe it's a later one or an earlier one. Certainly I want to take that off. It's stamped in a different space too. That one is stamped over here. And this one's not stamped there. So it must be under there or something I'd say. I would imagine they will perform much the same. So I'm going to... Actually, what are these? Is that the speaker wires or no? There's three wires here. That's obviously the earth or the aerial. Well, it's probably the earth. This was the power cord. Jeez, that is really, <laughs> really crusty. So that'll have to be the first thing I change, I think. Okay, let's get into it and see what we're up against. Let's hope that the transformer is not like the one on the STC. So this is what is expected of a shed radio, or a radio that's been out in the shed for decades. As you can see, it is pretty nasty in there. So I'm hoping that there's no red backs or anything in here. Up in Sydney, you have to be a little bit careful because you can sometimes get funnel webs in there and they are deadly just as deadly as the redback spiders are the redbacks are pretty small so you don't want those in the house okay it looks okay so let's continue on. I'll take that outside. Put that down carefully so the muck doesn't go everywhere. Now, where's the... That's down there. I can't remember... Because there's a grub screw on the on the um, the knobs, and that is right down in there somewhere. So excuse my head. I think there's something. Ah, yes. I have to undo the dial mechanism now it's coming out mm. 
Obviously the speaker grill is going to need replacing. There's bits of bits of dial glass down in there. We have some something there. The speaker looks reasonable. There's a split there. Pretty scratchy. So the dial string is kaput. We have another extremely rusty output transformer. That is the speaker wires. That's a very rusty little screw. Uh, where did that come from? <laughs> These are heavy for their size. All the caps obviously need replacing. So that one is, yeah, okay. That one's there. That one is completely split down in the middle. That one's there. Not quite sure. Oh, okay. Someone has replaced this capacitor. Looks like it's blown out at the end, positive end. So that would have had a cardboard case on it originally and they've put a metal one in there hmm just don't know where these wires used to go but I'll have to trace that I wonder if the if someone has tried to fix this and given up because the output transformer or something has died so I'll measure the the transformers try and work out where this wire went at least I've got the other one as a guide it may be a bit different given this is an earlier a later build I should say I love putting shields in these uh, Phillips sets. I'm hoping the meter is visible. So we'll do this. Open by the looks of it. Yes, yeah, so the, the um, output transformer is open. So that's why they retired it. Well, this resistor seems to be open in here. So that's a hundred and 
101. So that winding seems okay. So 327, 238, 334 ohms. Okay. So where does the power come in? So it comes in through this. This is the switch. Um, black, red. Black. So that is the positive or the red wire from the switch. And that is the black wire. So that should be open. Yep. So that seems okay. You won't know, of course, until we turn it on and then check the voltages. <laughs> 